Hallelujah. Well, sit down and let's get to work. Tell your neighbor we're in the school of the spirit. That's what the Lord said. So it is um, a school setting. And I pray that um, you will get a good certificate. Praise God. So this is the first um, message. Unstoppables. And um, listening to everything that the Holy Spirit has said since Thursday, the first thing that I hear the Spirit saying to the church and to us individually is it is time to move. It is time to move. I said to you yesterday or so that while I was praying and um, looking towards this meeting, the Lord brought a third word in my spirit. So we have a triangle of um, ministrations from the Lord. 2014, he came in January and said, unshakable. And um, we are unshakable. Amen. Are you? Amen. We've passed through things that will have shaken others. And we have remained unshakable. And we remain unshakable. And then this year, unstoppable. That's what we are dealing with now. That's what God is doing. To do something in you and put something in your hand to make you unstoppable. So you should focus on what is happening to you. And then the third word, which we will be addressing and getting into at the convention, is untouchable. Amen. I mentioned that um, yesterday. So the theme for this year's convention is untouchable. Amen. I don't want to preempt the Holy Spirit what he's going to do and how he's going to move, but we're focused on what he's doing now. And remember, God comes from the future to the present to work. So understand that we will be moving the church as a whole will be moving. Individuals will be moving. It is your responsibility after this seminar to be unstoppable. There will be things that want to stop people. We have had different teachings along that line. But your mandate now is to be unstoppable. Praise God. So God is saying to you, do something in the direction of your prayer and dreams as fast as possible. Start doing something in the direction of your prayer and dreams. It is not time to sit now. It's time to move. Praise God. Number two. Being unstoppable is a spirit, not an event. So you must carry the spirit of the unstoppables. And let me say this to you, it is not only born again people that can be unstoppable. 
the difference between the born again man and the not born again man is seen in their final destination ultimately and is also seen in the medium of their results coming okay so it's possible to find a person not born again that has the spirit of being unstoppable do you get what i'm saying and um, so you don't assume that well a, a sinner cannot carry that spirit you can but you can carry it in a measure it's not in the same measure that the born again man carries it i hope you have followed what i'm saying we have heard of men we have seen men that life threw everything at them and they refused to give up praise god in fact sometimes it's um strange how that sinners can imbibe the right spirit and saints have the knowledge without the spirit god wants you to carry that spirit life will throw things at you but you have the spirit of an unstoppable one it's not just an event that happens once it's a spirit you carry and then we dealt with that on thursday praise god number three you must constantly generate the power to back up your position through fasting and praying number four the key is not just you it is who and what is your backup if your backup is smaller than what you are facing you'll be stopped but for the born again man our backup is always greater the bible says they that be with us are more than they that are with them greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world if god be for us who can be against us so you must know who and what is your backup praise god very important who is for me who is with me it's not about you alone it's also about your backup number five is number five number five you will need to form a team there are certain things in life that you cannot do alone so there will be a time in your journey that you will need to form a team so understand the principle of strategic partnering not flocking the principle of strategic partnering not flocking it is right from the word go on the planet god built this into human nature he said it is not good that man should be alone and when god said it is not good he still means it is not good amen two are better than one you can improve on that the problem is you must find your second that is going to make you better on time the wrong company will cost you a lot so recognize the place of strategic partner even in prayer the bible says, if two of you shall agree as touching anything it shall be done so don't walk alone praise god usually loners get stopped linkers are unstoppable 
Now, this point that I'm mentioning is a point that you will, you don't need to come to church to know about partnerships and all that. The world does it. But I'm talking of Holy Ghost-led partnerships. You need to form a team to conquer certain things in your future. And you start gathering that team now. Wise people that want to attempt great things, they see it first in a, at a distance, and they begin to gather the team strategically, looking at what they have and what they need. Amen. When your team is correct, they will have what you lack. So there will be respect and honor. Amen. So understand that you need to form a team. Don't walk alone. Don't form the wrong company. The Bible says the one that escaped the sword of Elisha, the sword of Jehu will get. So it's not just the sword of Elijah or the sword of Elisha alone. There's another sword that you must get. Your wife is a partner, your husband is a partner, but you need other partners as you go through life. I remember a particular man of God that um, came to town some time ago. Not this town. I will mention the place. Some of you start guessing. And um, we were doing ministry, traveling around villages and all that. So he came to church, to town, where we were at that time, and... Um, just fresh and anointed, handsome, you know, and all that. Because when we come back to town from the mission field, we'll go to the particular church and fellowship on Sunday. And so he came there as one of the new pastors, and people began to flock around because he had the anointing, he had the touch of God, and you knew it was going somewhere to happen. Praise God. And then, so we enjoyed this ministry and all that and things like that. And then suddenly he left that organization to start his own ministry and um, and trouble came you know there were some challenges and problems that he faced and um, i remember one of the women that gave him problem i had met that woman before he met her. And God had showed me who that woman was. Okay? So when the problem happened and um, affected his ministry, things were not what it's supposed to be. If I had to close the church and all that, I saw him one day and I asked him a question. I said, why did you fight alone? That the voices that were speaking against you were too many for you. Okay, you could have reached out to other people that knew you. You know? But at that time, it wasn't um, easy to help the church. But he still has his ministry in a way. So that, that was the absence of strategic partnerships. I hope you're following what I'm saying. Praise God. I remember a man that... Um, his wife went through a terrible attack and part of the attack came from the church they were going there's some opposition there that ganged up against the wife and she almost lost her life and we got involved in ministering to them and she survived miraculously and so the time came for testimony and um, she wants to share the testimony. So they asked me, I said, well, really, I don't think you should now. Okay. So, and um, the husband asked me after some time, what's going to, I said, well, whatever you are going to do, don't mention my name. I said, my relationship with you is a joker of the Holy Spirit. Don't let your enemies be aware that I have a link with you. It's not every relationship that is public. Amen? So you must understand strategic partnership to make you unstoppable. 
Is that okay? You need to form that team. Nobody can form it for you. You will do it yourself. And pray. Holy Ghost is going to lead you. Do you get that? You must know who is on your team. I've done a number of teachings in the past on the tag team miracle and mystery. You must know that the Holy Ghost is on your tag, is your tag team member. You should know I'm, I'm your tag team member. Okay? And um, your pastor is your tag team member and all that. But most people don't take advantage of their tag teams, you know? And then if you have watched some wrestling matches, some of the wrestling matches that are very interesting is when two tag team members are fighting. And they are quarreling and the opponent defeat them. They win because they didn't agree. You must know those that you must agree with. Is that okay? So you see all through the Bible, God formed strategic partnership. Jesus sent them out two by two. He didn't send them out one by one. He chose them one by one, but he didn't send them out one by one. So there is somebody that is commissioned together with you. You must find them and form that team, build that team, strengthen that team. Are you following what I'm saying? Don't despise the people that are supposed to be on your strategic team. Praise God. Daniel had his own team, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They prayed together. Joshua and Caleb were a team. Moses and Aaron. Jonathan and David. Jonathan died when he separated from his covenant partner. He shouldn't have died. And you know Adam and Eve, they were a team. Paul and Barnabas. Amen. Now, this strategic partnership and team, there are three directions that you must look to become unstoppable. Number one is mentorship. Number two is marriage. Number three is friendship. Now, the ideal order is what I have placed, I've presented to you. Mentorship, marriage, friendship. Do you get what I'm saying? But that is not generally how life works. People have, some people have friends before they married. And some people don't even know about, about mentorship until much later. But ideally, you should have a mentor. Your natural father should have been a mentor. If they didn't do that, then God gives you other fathers that will mentor you. So that they can see the things that you are not seen when you begin to make choices of friends and marriage. But whatever the direction you have taken first, your mentor or somebody mentorship to you, marriage and friendship will have what you lack. Do you get what I'm saying? That does not in itself guarantee that you are going to be unstoppable. Do you get what I'm saying? One day I told a friend, I said, the problem that I see with you is that everyone that God has given as your friend and assistance, you are fighting them. It was a serious statement. I said, did you notice that everything that cost you, it was a counsel that conflicted with that of the people that God gave you? Because somebody is going to be in your life, that devil is going to plan there, maybe, if, maybe looking like a friend, but he's going to give you counsel that's going to get, get you in trouble. And somebody that God has given you, you must pray that you recognize them. That you have them does not mean it will work. You have to recognize that and respond to it. Do you get what I'm saying? Amen. So pray for that. There are people that we envy when you have that in place and the devil will try to separate you from them i hope you understand that if you get if you get it right in marriage your spouse is going to be one of them spend time to pray together spend time to talk together discuss things and share your heart together is that okay and if you get it right in mentorship i call mentorship father okay if you get it right you've got a powerful force that can help you to see what you are not seeing and then friends in your life. Amen. So have it in place. There are two kinds of battles that we fight in life. I fight battles and we fight battles. 
the I five battles you are going to fight alone. Nobody's going to be there to fight for you. You do that fighting. The we fight battles, you need to have a tag team. Whenever you confront that, don't be alone. Amen. But don't flock also like chicken. Eagles don't flock. They partner strategically and purposefully. The Lord Jesus Christ said, where the carcass is, that is where the eagles will gather. So you must recognize that. Is that okay? Choose your tag team members among people of faith. No matter the field that you are functioning at. Choose your tag team members among the people of faith. People that can stand with you back to back and take your back and cover you and be there with you when you need them. Is that okay? Number six. Develop the habit of going to the presence of God. The house of God. The spirit of God. The man of God. The people of God. The presence of God. The house of God. The spirit of God. The man of God. And the people of God. It is a habit that you have to develop and form. It doesn't come easy on our flesh. But develop it. Praise God. Something happens in church that doesn't happen anywhere else. Something happens in the presence of God that doesn't happen anywhere else. So develop the habit. Your flesh will not want to go there. But if you're going to be unstoppable as a child of God, then you must develop that habit. You go into the presence of God. In the presence of God, you see light and see things as they truly are before God. Amen. The house of God. Develop the habit of coming to the house of God for fellowship, for the things that God says you should do. I'll talk about this later. But develop that habit. Form the habit. Don't joke about it. The Bible says one of the signs of last days is that people will be missing in the presence of, in the house of God and presence of God. Is that okay? N not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Hebrews 10, 25. As the manner of some is, as you see the day approaching, when we should be tapping strength from each other spiritually, some people will be moving away. Don't form that habit. Is that okay? Praise God. Next point, number seven. This is summarization of the previous days together. You must know your weapons and how to use your weapons. You must know your weapons. You must know how to use your weapons. And you must know the weapons to take to specific battles. You can't go to a gunfight carrying knives. The weapons of God for us, the Bible described them in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. It said the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal. That tells you, as a child of God, your weapons are not something physical-based. No matter how good the physical-based things in our life are, they are not our weapons. So know the weapons that God has planned for you as a child of God and um, respect them. One mark that you see with, of the devil is that the devil will laugh at the weapons that God has chosen for you. But you must not laugh at that weapon. If you allow the devil to deceive you, to despise the weapons that God has given to you, he will beat you. Did you get what I'm saying? Don't mock the weapons that God has chosen for you. I said it before and I'll say it again. The first weapon of the devil against the weapons of God in our hand is to make the things of God look foolish. And more so in these last days that the attacks of um, the devil against the church is increasing and is finding assistance in careless people. Do you get what I'm saying? The last election that um, held, while the elections was going on, we prayed that God is going to give us election divine. And there will be one time, there won't be any 
quarrel about it and things like that and all that. And while the elections were going on, they were counting results and all that. What was burning on my heart were the prophecies that different men of God gave across the country. And I knew that the devil is coming back with those, web, with those prophecies against the church. In fact, one particular prophet said, um, President Jonathan is coming back. If he doesn't come back, know that God has not called me. <laughs> oh yes, it's in the Sun newspaper. It is there. I won't mention names, you know. But these are very popular prophets. They said it on TV, said it in newspapers and things like that. And now, the Sun newspaper of two days ago carried it and began to highlight it. Do you get what I'm saying? One said there's no doubt about it. It's coming back and things like that and all that. Are you following what I'm saying? And um, now, such things make unbelievers not to take us serious. Are you following what I'm saying? And a Catholic priest said that he's not coming back. So, now people, are tend, people, tend that, people tend to think that most, many, many of us Pentecostal preachers are unserious people. Are you following what I'm saying? But that is all part of the attack of the devil. I hope you are following what I'm saying. Because the devil will keep attacking the truth and keep attacking the truth until you don't trust the truth again. I hope you follow what I'm saying. So you must know the truth that you believe and hold it fast. Is that okay? I have said it over and over again that God knows who is going to win things. For example, the next World Cup is coming up when? 20, huh? 2018. Is it? God knows who is going to win it. But you know what? God is not going to tell anybody. Did you hear what I'm saying? The next election in Nigeria 2019, God knows who is going to win it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But if he tells anybody at all, it is not for public declaration. I have said, and I'm going to say it again, all the prophets that bring prophecies about the nation to newspapers, they are looking for relevance. Most of the time, they are not sent by God. Amen? My concern about this particular situation is that almost every one of them that said it, they have a similar kind of ministration. All right? And my feeling is they are coming from the same source. And God is judging that source by making them to miss it. Are you following what I'm saying? So we've got to be careful. God has not called us for popularity. He just called us to obey him. So as God's people, we must be careful and face what God has told us to do. Is that okay? Now you are going to hear people talk in your places of work and say, well, I don't believe in those Pentecostals. I don't believe in this and all that. Just walk away from such talk. Is that all right? Amen. Praise God. So, um, the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. They don't fail if we know how to work them. No matter the weapon that God shows you and gives you, it will be mighty through God. He gave David the sling and the stone, the jawbone of an ass for Samson, and the rod of Moses. The real power is not the physical weapon, but the God behind it, and your faith to use that weapon. If they had doubted, the weapon would not work. Is that okay? Praise God. The next point, number eight. There is a particular mindset of the unstoppable man that you must develop. If the devil can stop you in your mind, he can stop you anywhere else. Is that okay? The first man that climbed Mount Everest said... It is not the mountains that we conquer. It is ourselves. Did you get that? It is not the mountains that we conquer. It is ourselves. And that is true. To conquer anything, you must conquer yourself. 
the great Alexander of old conquered the world, but he failed to conquer himself. An alcohol conquered him. You have seen great men that conquered everything and their flesh conquered them. If you're going to be unstoppable, you must conquer yourself. Did you hear what I'm saying? And when I say conquer yourself, you must conquer your thoughts. You must conquer your fears. Don't avoid your fears. You must conquer them. It is not wrong to have fears, but it is wrong to let your fear rule you. You must identify your fears and conquer them. Everybody has them in different forms. Do you get what I'm saying? If you see a man that looks fearless, the, the, the truth is that he's afraid of something that is different from what you are afraid of. Did you hear what I said? There is absolutely no man on the earth that is fearless. Only Jesus is fearless. David, the mightiest warrior in the Old Testament, said, I sought the Lord and he delivered me from all my fears. So David had secret fears. But if you are going to conquer anything in life, you must conquer your fears. Denying your fears is not going to help you. I hope you are following what I'm saying. Praise God. The person that is standing in front of the people and both, some of, in fact, most people, I hope you follow what I'm saying, most people are afraid of speaking in front of people. I hope you understand what I'm saying. So the tendency for you to assume that somebody that has conquered the fear of speaking in front of people that is better than you exists in the minds of most people. Are you following what I'm saying? But the truth is that that man that has conquered that fear has something else that he's afraid of. So find your own fear and conquer it. Because a fear that is unconquered will contaminate your faith. And contaminated faith will be defeated. And make you to be stopped. So identify your fears in life. Conquer them. Amen. You must conquer your emotions. You must conquer your experiences. One of the most terrible limiting force of life are our experiences. Well, there's no, no, I don't know anybody that has that kind of experience. Or the experience you have had can create a barrier. I can't go beyond this. I can't go beyond There are many studies that people have done that show that if you have a barrier of experience inside, you are not going to go forward. So you must conquer your experience. Good or bad. You must conquer them and put them down. You must conquer your prejudices. And you must conquer your boundaries. Everybody has boundaries inside. Hello? How many of you know that or let me ask you this, this question. What amount of money can you spend without being afraid? Write it down. That's the boundary that you have. Anything above that amount of money, you begin to tremble. Do you get what I'm saying? Praise God. And you notice that that same amount of money, you can't give it in church. Some of you are already laughing. That amount of money, you can't allow your wife to spend it. So it's a boundary. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Praise God. So you must find your boundaries and conquer them. If you've seen somebody that does eye jump, I, I did I jump a little, but I wasn't proficient in it. But one thing I found out is that you see somebody that is running towards the bar and it just goes like this under. How many of you have seen someone like that before? Especially in secondary school sports. Okay, what happened is that he didn't jump it inside. The high jumper that is going to jump it, you will know. Okay, the way he positions himself. He has jumped that thing in his heart. So he just goes and flies away. But the man that goes under, he has not conquered himself. So you must conquer yourself. Amen? Praise God. Next point. 
remove all the lies that the enemy has used against you. Remove all the lies that the enemy has used against you. Somebody wrote that fear means forget everything and run. Fear, F-E-A-R. Forget everything and run. And he said the antidote is face everything and rise. Amen? So you see some people, they will forget everything and run. And some of us will face everything and see, I will face everything and rise. Amen. Praise God. Next point. Shift from positions that the enemy can easily defeat. Shift from positions that the enemy can easily defeat. There are certain positions that devil can always defeat every time. And as a child of God, you must not find yourself holding that position. Is that okay? Pride is a position the devil will defeat every time. Every single time. Sin is a position the devil will defeat every time. Compromise is a position the devil is going to defeat. Shift from that. Next point. Change the limiting partnerships in your life and form positive ones. Do an audit of all the relationships and partnerships you have in your life. The truth of the matter is there are people that are going to be liabilities to your future. I like David for that kind of mindset. When David was running from his son Absalom, there was one of his friends, Basili, an elderly man that left with him and wanted to go with him. And David said, look, you are not a young man. You'll be a problem to me on this journey. Okay? So you don't have to go with us. And the man nominated a young man to go with David. Are you following what I'm saying? Another of his friends told him, he said, you are going to be a liability also. Okay? But you can do something for me. Go back to the palace. And go and stay with Absalom. You can defeat the council of Ahitophel. But if you go with me, you are going to be a problem. Do you understand that? So that somebody is a good person in your life does not mean he's a fit person for a particular situation. And so you must understand that if you're going to be unstoppable, amen, and there are people that they are going to create a liability to your future, you must separate or disconnect from them. Separation is not the same as quarrel. I hope you are following what I'm saying. Praise God. It simply is divine wisdom to create the right future for us. Next point, the readiness to make adjustments is one of the strongest keys to becoming unstoppable. Rigidity is one of the tools of the devil to stop people. Rigidity. Amen. Amen. Now, let me say this to you. The only place that rigidity is good is where God has spoken to you. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Praise God. I'm rigid about the fact that God has called me. I hope you understand that. God has called me to ministry. I'm not going to change that. I'm not going to discuss that with anybody. You can't bring any prophecy to change my mind on that. Did you hear what I'm saying? Praise God. And you must know that very well. But you must be flexible about many things. Did you hear me? Amen. When you have the word of God, then you'll be rigid in holding to the word of God. But in moving with the word of God, sometimes you have to be, to, to be flexible. 
I read the story of a captain of a ship sailing on a very dark night. And that ship saw a light ahead. And he thought it was the light of another ship. But this particular ship was carrying the admiral of the fleet. That's the topmost man in the navy. So the seaman on board, on, on top of the whatever, said, identify yourself. This is Captain so-and-so. And the man on the other end said, this is um, second lieutenant, very junior officer, so-and-so. He said, this is the captain of this ship. Turn 10 degrees, whatever. The young man, the other man said, you turn 10 degrees. So the captain said, this is the ship of the admiral of the fleet. I said, turn. He said, I am the lighthouse. You turn. Some of you didn't get the message. The lighthouse is on the ground. The ship of the admiral is about to crash. He said, admiral or no admiral, you will die very soon. Turn now. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> so you must know where title does not respect problem. Or problem does not respect title. Turn. Tell your neighbor turn. There are some times that you just need to turn. Do you know there are men that lost their family, lost their marriage because he refused to turn. There are people that are suffering today because he refused to turn. Say sorry to your husband. Say sorry to your father can change the whole complexion of everything. I hope you are following what I'm saying. Praise God. Amen. When people are rigid on something wrong, they suffer terribly. Next point, you need more than a willing spirit to be unstoppable. You need a conquered flesh. I said that when I started this teaching, you need to conquer your flesh. Your flesh is going to lead you on a path you don't want to go. Your flesh is going to want to do things that will weaken your spiritual life, weaken your relationship, and dull your senses. So you must refuse to go after your flesh. Amen. Next point, you must develop a fighting spirit in life. Whether you like it or not, whether you want to or not, you will fight sometimes in life. If you don't fight for yourself, you will have to fight for somebody that is precious to you. Are you listening to what I'm saying? And you must develop a fighting spirit. Not just have fighting skills. You must develop a fighting spirit. Sometimes doctors will tell you in the hospital that it wasn't the sickness that killed that person. They gave up the fight. He just gave up and accepted to die. And I'm not telling you that it's something easy. If somebody is under the battering of pain, and pain can alter your sense of perception of reality. Some pains are demonic and terrible. Are you listening to what I'm saying? But what is going to hold you steady is to develop a fighting spirit in life. I am not going to be a victim in life. The truth of the matter is if there is a battle between two forces, there will be casualties on both sides, on the losing side and on the winning side. It is your direct responsibility to make sure that you don't end up a casualty on the winning side. If you are born again, you are already on the winning side. That doesn't mean that the devil will not defeat you. Do you get what I'm saying? There are many Christians that assume that, well, I'm born again, that's all that there is to it. No, you've got to fight. Somewhere down the road, there's going to be somebody, the devil is going to raise up. You read the story of Goliath in the Bible and say, hey, Goliath fought, and some people ran and we laugh at them. Every one of us will have our battles. There is no promotion without fight. There's no advancement without opposition in life and in destiny. And when God said, unstoppable means you make up your mind, nothing is going to stop me. I said on Thursday that there are two categories of people on the earth. Those that can be stopped and those that cannot be stopped. You belong in one of the two groups. 
if you are going to be in the group that can be stopped, you must be a fighter. There's a devil on the loose that wants to get you to give up, abandon sheep, and turn and run. They have all kinds of disappointments that will come, all kinds of betrayers and things like that. But you must never, 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 never give up. Did you get what I'm saying to you? Never, ever let it cross your mind to give up. I've always wondered at people that they said they, they committed suicide. You understand what I'm saying? That is one thought that has never crossed my mind and will never cross my mind. Are you following what I'm saying? I've been disappointed. I felt humiliation. I felt all kind of embarrassment and things. But you know what? I've never ever thought of killing myself. Number one, life is too good to live now. Are you? Is it? But heaven is better. Well, he's waiting. Are you listening to what I'm saying? I'm not in a hurry to go to heaven. If you're in a hurry to go to heaven, we'll pray for you. Do you get what I'm saying? But number two is the fact that. There are too many people that need me around. So I'm not going to give up. I'm going to fight. Are you following what I'm saying? Praise God. When, people, when somebody com committed suicide, he didn't think wide enough. Because you are creating a lot of complications for many people. There will be all kinds of problems. Devil will throw all kinds of things at you. But don't give up. Suicide is a coward's way out of his problem. And you are not a coward. Did you get what I'm saying? So don't give up. Fight, fight, fight. Tell your neighbor, fight. fight. The Bible says, fight the good fight of faith. God has not produced cowards. You are not one. You must be a warrior. Do you understand that? And the devil will give you a good fight if you don't give him one. I hope you are following what I'm saying. He will give you a good fight and you must give him one. Amen. Well, it's, it's good. I'm starting. Be, every, every department of life has its own fight. Sometimes I find some people, all they do is fight faith. I don't believe in that faith business. And all. I say, stop fighting faith. Fight the fight of faith. Don't fight marriage. That, you, that marriage is not doing well for you. Don't fight it. Marriage is bad. I don't believe in marriage. Fight the good fight of marriage. Every marriage is not, every good marriage is not a donation. It is a product of effort and fight. Do you get what I'm saying? You get involved in business and say business is dirty, so you fold up. You couldn't fight. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The devil is doing his job. You must know your job. Can you get what I'm saying? Years ago, one of my associate pastors that went to start his own ministry came back to see me that um, the landlord of his venue, who is the king of the town he was in that time, increased their rent times three. And he didn't have the money. So he ran to me to give him, to give him a loan. I was 5,000 that time. And I said, if I give you this 5,000, that won't stop the man increasing the rent again. So why don't you go back and fight this assault? It's an attack against your destiny, against your assignment. It wasn't that I couldn't give him the money because I knew that once you give the devil an inch, he's going to take a mile. You give the devil a ride in your car, he's going to take over the steering wheel. Are you following what I'm saying? So he went back and started fasting. I think he did 21 days fasting. After 21 days fasting, the king called him and said, you know, I was just thinking that um, I, I, I don't think I want to increase the rent again. On his own, he canceled the increase. So when he came to me, I said, which one do you prefer now? For me to have given you a loan of 5,000, you owe me money, but now the man has given you a cancellation. You don't owe anybody, and you have the future. What you don't fight for, you can't keep. So develop a fighting spirit to be unstoppable. Things will show up. Especially if you're a Christian. Every position that is available has opposition. Did you get that? Write down in your note position and opposition. How many of you want to get the top post in your career? Let me see your hand up. Raise your hand. 
Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Eh? Do you know what? All the demons and devils that fought our current president, they know the next person to face. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm telling you. Yeah. <laughs> Praise God. Right position or position? How many of you want the top position in your career? Let me see your hand up. Put down the top devil in that area. You are not going to be dealing with minor devils now. I hope you have followed what I'm saying. When armed robbers come to a bank, who do they ask for? Huh? The manager. If he's not on seat, who do they ask for next? The accountant. Is it? The what? The BS. Business. Okay, business service manager, whatever. So anything that has a position has an opposition coming to it. So how many of you want to be branch managers? <laughs> Praise God. Wonderful. Amen. Someone say, I want to be a general overseer. I say, they are general overseer devils. Oh. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. <laughs> you know, sometimes you just, you just see people talk and say, you know, um, all these men of God, Areogun, um, Adeboye, Oyedepo, Kumuyi, they don't even put pastor there. <laughs> People that you don't know mention your name at dining table. Before they sleep, they mention your name. And all kind of thing. Don't you know every time they are, and they are not mentioning for prayer? <laughs> are you following what I'm saying? And yet, you see a young man. God has called me. I said, is that so? And you want, you, st you, you really want to? All right, praise God. Are you ready to fight? A man of God came to meet the late Archbishop Dawson and said, he wants God to give him the anointing that he carried. So he said, kneel down. And he said, I say, Father, every court case I've had, every problem I've had, let him have his share. He says, I'm looking for your anointing. I'm not looking for the court case. He said, you can't have the anointing without the court case. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Praise God. How many of you want to be landlords? There are demons that are the landlord in the area that you want to build housing. They are the ones that will make sure money does not come to complete your house. Every, every abandoned building, the man that abandoned it wanted to finish it. If you had, nobody starts a project that didn't plan to finish. But there are demons that their job is to abort projects. And if you are not willing to fight, you won't get to where you're going. When, did, when Peter was, saw Jesus walking on water, I said, Lord, if it is you, tell me to come. And he said, come. If you ask Peter where he was going, he was going to Jesus. The Bible said so. But when a body spirit rose up midway, fear struck him. And he began to sink. You will not sink. Amen. So before you start, make up your mind. Are you hearing what I'm saying? To be a finisher in life, you will be a fighter. Only fighters finish. So you must be ready to fight. Fight things inside, fight things outside. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Everybody has his own battles. I hope you are hearing what I'm saying. If you go to our branches, our pastors, associate pastors, go to our branches, you will see the branches in different categories of experience of the grace and the power of God that is upon the house. Do you understand what I'm saying? The reason is what you see on ground is the manifestation of the effectiveness of the battle that that pastor is fighting. My own battle as a head of a ministry is unique to me. Your own battle as an associate is unique to you. You're going to fight your battle. 
I hope you have what I'm saying. There are times that your father will fight for you, but you will get to an age in life that you will start fighting. Your father gave you out in marriage. She's not going to fight the, the, fact, the fight of marriage with you. Your husband gave you three slaps. Far, 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 far. Oh, you, 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 you pack your load and run to your father's house. Is he every time I slap you, I run to your father's house? You have to go back there and fight for your marriage. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If some women come and say, excuse me, my mommy, when the, the, well, another one woman wants to take my husband. That is a battle. What did you say about it? Hey, I told him, do you love me? <laughs> he loves you. He hasn't stopped loving you. Somebody is shifting space inside this love. So you have to tell the other person, listen, this space is mine and I mean to keep it. Are you following what I'm saying? When we first married at Leisha, when mommy was four months pregnant, she was coming to the office one day in the estate we were living at Leisha. And a man met her and started toasting her with four months pregnancy. Yeah. She told the man and said, are you blind? The man said, that makes it better. I'm telling you. Hello. Now, what do you think I did? Huh? Smile? No. No. Are you following what I'm saying? One day, one man called me on the phone. Ah, called me on the, phone, on the phone, watching me on television. And said, man of God, you know what? I am going to marry your wife. I said, you? I said, I will see to it that you die. Amen. <laughs> uh, now, what am I saying that to you for? So that, the, the, that, that, that a man is crazy not to see a woman preaching that is beautiful. Oh, yeah. Because some of, some of you are too lackadaisical like about what God has given you. You say, What did I do? Speak to the man alone? No. I didn't, I, 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 I didn't joke about it. Are you following what I'm saying? For seven days, I went to heaven that God, if that man remain alive by the end of this year, I will resign from preaching for you. That he even said it at all. If you forgive him, I'm not forgiving him. Yeah. You know your Bible says is the child of a lazy man you collect. <laughs> Every one of you that is married to a beautiful woman, you've got a battle on your hand. Pray that your wife become ugly if you don't want the battle. <laughs> And every woman that is married to a handsome man, you got a big bad trouble on your hand. Handsome with a big position. You've got contenders. How many of you know that the person that gets attacked the most on the football field is the attacker that has the ball? Am I correct? Good. Do you know there are some fantastic attackers that didn't finish their career? Very wonderful footballers. The defenders that knocked their legs didn't let them last. I hope you're following what I'm saying. If you are not a fighter, you will constantly lose things. I hope you're following what I'm saying. Well, I want, to be, I want to get the top post in my career. I want to get this, I want to get that. The devil is coming after something in your life. And you must tell the devil you are not going to take it. I hope you follow what I'm saying. Praise God. Amen. When Lester Shunwa was here, he said that every minister of the gospel in your church, there are at least 10 women that are fantasizing about sleeping with the pastor. 
So a pastor's wife has got a big problem on her hand. Are you following what I'm saying? Amen? If you are going to remain holy, you will fight to keep that position. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Praise God. Some of you are looking at me as if I said something from the Bible of Satan. 